Looking ahead. Challenges and opportunities in the changing world. Welcome to Talking Economics, a podcast by the Center for Economic Research and Graduate Education, Economics Institute. The Czech labor market situation has been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic and in recent months by the war in Ukraine. A high number of refugees, among whom women predominate, a tight market and high inflation present new challenges. What are now the main characteristics of the Czech labor market? What changes has the labor market undergone in recent years? What is the position of women in the Czech labor market? We talk about these issues with Klara Kalíšková, our PhD in economics alumna. Klara is an assistant professor at Prague University of Economics and Business, Faculty of Informatics and Statistics, researcher of the IDEA Think Tank, and associated scientist at the Economics Institute of the Czech Academy of Sciences. Her main research interests lie in empirical and policy-oriented research in the fields of labor economics and applied econometrics. Welcome, Clara. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Well, uh, many of our listeners are not from or in the Czech Republic. So before we start with the current situation, I would like you to point out the main features of the Czech labor market. Okay, so when you say what is really typical about the Czech labor market currently, but also in the past years, is probably the low unemployment. That's probably the most like striking feature. Uh, we have very low unemployment rate, and we also, especially currently, have uh, many vacancies that films uh, firms struggle to basically fill in with workers. Uh, so it seems that the labor market is very tight at the moment. And uh, we also are uh, kind of struggling with wages. So there are kind of pressures for uh, having higher wages that are connected to high inflation. But on the other hand, um, now we know that uh, the labor market productivity is not rising so fast that we could go up with wages very, very quickly. So there are like different forces uh, that, uh, that affect the, the current situation that, that is tight in many in many areas. Mm -hmm. Why would you say the productivity is lagging in um, increasing or, or catching up with the West? So there are some indicators how can you measure labor market productivity. You can, for example, take the, the GDP and divide it by the working hours, like total in the economy, and kind of see how much worker per hour generates. And when you look at uh, the international comparisons in these indicators, uh, the Czech Republic is usually at the lower end of, of the EU. Um, this is very much connected to the structure of our economy, where we produce many things that have a rather lower value added. Um, so it's connected to that, of course. Um, And therefore, uh, when we look uh, in the past few years, the, the wages have been rising very fast. And it seems that uh, the labor market productivity is not catching up with that. So there is kind of uh, seems, seems to be like a ceiling on how quickly the wages can rise if the, the productivity is not catching up, right? Uh, were there any hopes that the pandemic would uh, change this in any way or... Has it affected this aspect? Well, it really seems that if we want to increase our productivity, we need to uh, innovate more. We need to put more money into R&D, uh, investing into new technologies and things like that. So to, to some extent, the pandemic's probably pushed into that direction. But I think that many firms are still very rigid in that sense. Mm -hmm. You have done extensive research on the position of women. And so can you be maybe more specific and tell us more about uh, the position of women in the labor market? Yeah, so that's also very, very specific. So the Czech Republic uh, has very high female employment for all women, but those with very small children. So we, we see that if you look at uh, women in their prime age years that either don't have children or have uh, older children, they tend to work a lot. So their employment rate is close to uh, the men's, which is not something that you could see in other countries. Uh, but if you look at women with especially preschool children, 
uh, we have one of the lowest employment rates. So what is very typical about the, the position of women on the Czech labor market is that kind of they work unless they have preschool children. In that case, uh, they are very likely to be actually at home uh, taking care of their children. And what are the explanations? Well, we have many uh, family policies that push into that direction. We have a long uh, parental leave uh, and allowance that, uh, so we have a long paid parental leave that kind of incentivizes women to stay at home for at least three years with, with each child. And this is also connected to a very low availability of some uh kindergartens or other types of institutional or other types of care pretty much for children, where when we look at children below three years of age, uh, there are still really few of them that attend some type of formal childcare. And even for children between three and six, so those the preschoolers, uh, we still have uh, relatively low coverage. Um, and therefore, women are, in, in some extent, uh, they are to some extent, forced to really stay at home for a long time. This is also connected to another feature of the labor market, which is very low share of part-time jobs. Because very often when you ask uh, in surveys, uh, women would like to get back to work some, somewhat gradually, right? So they would like to start with a part-time job or maybe some other form of flexible mm -hmm. work. And this is not very common in the Czech Republic. So if they don't have this option, then they will they are more likely to postpone the return to the labor market even further and therefore return uh, only later on when the child is older. And what is the problem with the part-time work? Uh, because the employers don't see it as uh, um, possible or there are some also administrative burdens on that? I think these are, there are many factors behind that. So the first one is what you mentioned is that the employers kind of perceive it as an extra cost to them uh, and there are no gains in a sense that you know that there will be some incentives for them to to provide part-time jobs uh, but also another thing is that uh, from the position of the employees uh, when you have relatively low wages uh, then there is very little incentive to work part-time especially when you have young kids and you have to arrange some childcare, right? Then the family budget is uh, suddenly maybe in negative numbers because the, the woman started to work. Because if you if you only get half of the relatively low wage, but you have to pay for childcare, I don't know, commuting and other costs connected to, uh, to work, it might not be uh, financially really very motivating for, for families. But there has been discussions about changing the the structure. the The pay is uh, like the insurance is paid on the part time work, right? So is is this changing? Yeah, or? yeah, 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 yeah. So so very recently, the Czech government decided to support the part time work, and so they introduced like um, um, a new scheme where firms, if they offer a part time job, they pay lower social security contributions. So this is an incentive for firms. Which which is nice. It is uh, it is kind of restricted to certain groups of workers, like women with small children or uh, young uh, and old workers. Uh, so this is nice. So this should at least to some extent incentivize firms to kind of try this. Uh, but I think that still we have to think about whether this is beneficial for the workers uh, themselves. Mm. Uh, whether we, I mean what I what I what I just said. So. If you have a relatively low wage to start with and high childcare costs, then this this is not really uh, very financially motivating. So we have to really think about these other things, which is uh, available childcare and also uh, you know incentivizing women to maybe. Uh, uh, collect the parental allowance in a short time so that you know they they don't have to think about about that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, have you have you seen any changes in uh, this situation over the years in the Czech labor market, either with respect to women or part time, except for this very recent change? Well, sh shortly, not really. So yeah, it, it's been moving very slowly. So for example, regarding the childcare, the situation is improving, but it's improving very slowly. 
Uh, the part-time jobs, they also grow over time, but they, they grow very, very, very slowly. So I think that, you know, if we want to, yeah, uh, kind of get to a better place uh, within a reasonable time frame, then we need to do more about it. It is not just kind of waiting to get there. Mm -hmm. And do you have any specific recommendations? Like what is uh, priority number one? Uh, you know, to to improve. Well, I think that we just need to rethink our family policies. We just have to think about uh, whether we want to motivate women to stay at home for several years or not. And I think that still in the in the public debate in the Czech Republic, the prevailing argument is that it is good for everyone if the woman stays at home for several years. And if this is the case, then all the policies are kind of aimed toward that end, right? So we we don't think about uh, childcare for children below three because we think that they are better off at home with, with the mother. Uh, we also don't have to think about part-time jobs because, again, we think that the mother should be at home with the child. Uh, and uh, we provide a relatively generous parental allowance uh, that uh, can be taken up until the child is three or four. Uh, again, with this thing in mind. So I think that uh, we need to really rethink what is what is the aim of these of these family policies. Well, um, my argument would be I'm not arguing against you, but uh, to, towards the policymakers, we want more flexibility, right? Like the women decide. Definitely. Uh, that's that's what I well, mm -hmm. maybe it doesn't look like that, but that's what I mean. So I think there are definitely women that are happy with the current mm -hmm. situation mm -hmm. and they should be allowed to kind of stay in it. But if you are not happy with it, then the whole policy is just towards making you stay at home. And if you don't want to do that, you just have to go against it, basically, mm -hmm. which is very difficult. So I think that we need to just provide more choice. And for example, mm -hmm. when we think about so so there has been discussions about uh like providing uh places like guaranteed places in childcare facilities for children let's say when they are two uh and this discussion is always about whether the child is should be at the facility when when he or she is two or not but i don't think this is the case the case is that if there is a guaranteed place then the family can decide mm -hmm. right Absolutely. they can really decide whether they want to put the child there or not but if there is no guarantee there is no decision because the place is not there mm -hmm. and you you cannot do what you want you just have to do what uh, the government basically forces you and that's to stay at home yeah and we may see over time that you know half of the kids who are two year old olds wants to actually or their parents want to send them so we can adjust the tough places but yes, just to exactly. enable the flexibility exactly i think this is uh leading us to the current situation where we are facing a major inflow of ukrainian migrants and most of them were they're mainly women with kids so they're entering a labor market which is not very much in uh, in uh, on their favor i would say uh first before we speak about the labor market we talked to dan Mini a few weeks ago and he was emphasizing the lack of data so the question is has the situation improved do we know how many migrants are here how many are still here uh, do we know if they are seeking employment or what is the situation so with with the total numbers, this is still a little bit difficult because the government doesn't really have a way to track them, right? So we don't really know how many of them returned to Ukraine or how many of them moved further to the West or to other countries. So we don't we are not really sure about the total numbers. But there has been some attempts uh, from the ministries to get some more more information about them, which is very nice. So in June, uh, there was a survey by the Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs, where they managed to contact um, uh, the refugees that ask for some social help. And they get quite a reasonable number of responses. So now at least we know kind of about uh, the structure of them. We know exactly what you mentioned, that the most typical refugee is a woman with one child, actually. Uh, and in um, uh, two-thirds of cases, the child is below five. So 
So it actually seems that uh, we actually really uh, face a typical refugee who is uh, a woman. She's also well educated. Uh, she has children. And two thirds of those that have children have small children, like uh, of preschool age. So it really seems that they they belong to this category that we that we just discussed. Mm -hmm. So uh, this, I suppose, is presenting quite a lot of challenges for the market that already was challenging. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, so it seems that, uh, at least from the survey, uh, it seems that about half of them are already employed here in the Czech Republic. So it seems that they managed, like, half of them managed to get some job. Uh, but uh, they are not working in qualified positions. Uh, and I think that uh, about only about 16% of those working really work in their own field. So this is what we could probably expect. So well, first of all, they are not here for a very, very long time. Most of them don't speak Czech, right? And most of them uh, didn't have time to uh, to get their qualifications kind of recognized here, right? So they can't, can't really work in their in their own field. Um, and also on top of that, we know that they are struggling exactly what we just with with these uh, challenges that we mentioned. So we know that they are struggling to get their kids into kindergartens or get places in schools. I think that in this survey, they found out that only about a third of preschool children attend kindergarten. So like two thirds of these women with preschool children, they don't really have them in the kindergarten. So either uh, they are uh, they are babysitted by some uh, relatives that they have here or, or somewhere else. Uh, but usually this is probably also the reason why these women don't work yet, because they have small children and they don't have a place to to put them to. Mm -hmm. Has the survey asked about their intent to stay? Because I think this is a, one of the big, you know, uh, topics that many people expect that the migrants will want to return back as soon as possible. So they yes, have... yes. So I don't think they ask in this survey, but it, there was another survey uh, by the uh, PAC Research, the company, uh, I think together with Ministry of Education, they also did some survey among migrants and they asked exactly about this, whether they would like to stay long term in the Czech Republic. And 43% uh, of the migrants said that they would like to stay here. So it seems that at least from their point of view, uh, of course, like majority of them would like to return at some point, uh, but many of them would like to stay here. And we also have to then uh, think about how to how to maybe allow them if we want and how to make this uh, this possible and also may maybe also like beneficial for uh, not only them, but also for the Czech economy, right? Well, with the tight labor market, it seems that it may be a valuable addition, right? That uh, the labor force is missing and... Definitely, definitely. So, so you know, one thing is that uh, we have low unemployment rate, but another thing is that uh, I think there are big reserves in uh, increasing the labor force because we, um, in the Czech Republic, we have many groups of people who are basically out of labor market, uh, like women with small children. They are not looking for a job uh, because they, they know they don't have a place uh, for their child, for example, in a childcare. Or uh, this also uh, concerns older workers they are near retirement age for example they are not really actively looking for a job so i think that we have to think about how to put these groups of people back to the labor market and this of course concerns the the ukrainian refugees as well right so uh so this could also kind of solve this this problem uh, of the tight labor market to fill some vacancies if we can allow for the kind of correct uh, set of skills or uh, like co correctly skilled workers to to get to the labor market. So this also concerns the fact that uh, the the Ukrainian women that came here they are highly educated, uh, mm -hmm. but in the current situation they can't really work in their own field or their own profession, right? And so what are the main uh, limitations? They need to first learn the like language, right, and then 
probably also they're struggling with the recognition of their qualifications. Yes, yes. And so so these are definitely the two important things. I think that in, even in the survey, the refugees mentioned that learning Czech would be one of the things that they would really appreciate as additional help, that this is something that they see that, uh, mm-hmm. that they need. Uh, then childcare. That was also another thing that was mentioned. So as I said, it, this is a specific group of workers and we have to think about uh, childcare. And then, as you mentioned, of course, we need their qualifications to be recognized here, right? Which is a currently a very complicated administrative process that could take a really long time. And I think that even a European Commission like recommended the that uh, that the member states try to make this process like easier uh, but we haven't really done much in that direction so i think there is room for improvement as well mm-hmm. uh, so so we we received a significant uh, group of people who also need the child care that we've been I think that the discussion, as you said, was has been in the Czech Republic for a while, that we need more opportunities of childcare. Do you see any changes? Do you see that this, you know, additional push with the migrants is uh, actually changing the situation and there is more drive towards uh, solving this issue? I'm, I'm afraid not. So I, I would really like to see this. So I think that especially in the spring, where there was a lot of optimism that people talk about this, that, you know, this mm-hmm. is kind of a great opportunity for us. And maybe these these Ukrainian women will try to kind of push for that. And then the government will realize that we need that. And then Czech women could benefit from mm-hmm. this as well, even if, if the Ukrainians decide to go back right to Ukraine when the situation permits, then, you know, if we manage to build additional kindergartens or create more places in childcare facilities, this would be beneficial for, uh, for our economy. But I don't really see that happening, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, would, I would really love to be more optimistic, but, you know, I, I, maybe I can tell you a little bit more about why I think this is the case. Okay. So, you know, the especially the kindergartens, uh, basically they are run by municipalities and mm-hmm. uh, the municipalities, they are not really very well motivated to, uh, to invest into them. Uh, especially given that if you want to build like additional building or really like increase uh, the, the capacities somewhat a uh, lot, this takes a lot of time, uh, a lot of paperwork. And so this is really difficult for them. And I still think that we perceive the Ukrainian refugees as kind of a short term thing here. So I think that everyone still kind of thinks that, you know, why should we build new kindergartens when these women might be gone in two to two, three months? So do you think that the fact that we finally have some information about the number of people who want to stay may change the situation, that now we will know, okay, 40% of them actually want to stay, so we need to make sure that uh, we make it right? Well, we should definitely take this into in, into consideration, right? So that's very important information. Uh, it would be nice. I think that this is a big opportunity for the for the Czech Republic. Uh, so we know we have a tight labor market that could use some extra workers. We also know that the pension system could really do with some extra, you know, <laughs> um, labor force. Uh, so that's definitely a big opportunity. But on the other hand, I still think that we also need to think about the Ukraine, right? So if, if they want to rebuild their country, we can't really kind of suck out the <laughs> the educated labor labor force uh, out of the country. So to some extent, we have to live with the fact that probably most of them at some point will will return to their, their country. But this shouldn't prevent us from taking this as an opportunity rather than a threat. Mm-hmm. I think with this, we, we can finish. I think this, uh, this was very nice uh, conclusion. So thank you, Clara, for being here and sharing with us your knowledge. Thanks. Thanks.